Good morning, everybody. We have nine days before we fly back to Europe. And so today's vlog is gonna be super chill. We're just gonna be door dashing around and testing some products. One of the most common requests I got when I was on my bike is that people wanna see drone footage. They wanna see way up high, they wanna see lots of different directions. I didn't get a drone though, I got a 360 degree camera. This is not an Insta360. I think it's called a Panox V2. It's basically running Android. The reason that I haven't used it before is because they don't have good editing software on my laptop. Any footage that I take on this, I need to load to my phone, I need to use their app, I need to edit it on my phone, and then I need to take that footage I need to stick it on my laptop. That's just a bunch of work, but it might be worth it. Let's test this and see if this is something that we should bring on the bike. It comes with a little extendy uh, stick, selfie stick, I'm not sure, but this way we can like hold it far out, hold it up high, get like high up views. Huh. What it does is it makes sure that the stick itself is outside of the frame so I can hold my camera up like this and it's still able to get a good shot of my face. I can swing it around, I can hold it up high, I can put it down low, yeah. Ideally, this will be able to get shots that are similar to drone shots, but without the extra hassle of having to fly a drone while I'm riding a bike and making sure that it doesn't hit anything. <clears throat> One of the things I wanna try is having this outside the window, is having this outside the window and then looking up at the top of the car. wait to see the footage once I'm editing this, but I think that probably looks similar to what a drone would see. Ah, let's get some morning burritos. Yes. Okay, we got our food. My biggest complaint about this is that I can't edit my videos on my laptop. I need to edit them on my phone, which just makes my workflow longer. And get up to 60 miles per gallon in city drive and live quite densely, making charging infrastructure a problem there. Okay, let's go start dashing. Okay, update. Going 70 miles down the interstate while holding this is a great way to accidentally drop it. Check it out, we are getting 28 cents back on gas. It costs $3 right now, but if we take a picture of the receipt, we get an extra 28 cents. That's like 10% off. So it's kind of funny. Um, our gas prices are a lot cheaper than Europeans' gas prices, but I recently read something that says that Americans pay roughly the same amount per year in gas as Europeans do, just because we drive so much more. And then we get an extra 10 cents off with their app. We got 12 gallons. So this receipt right here will give us an extra like $3 off. This app is called Upside. I've got a link to it in the description of this video. Okay, I got a couple of videos now. I'm gonna test the actual editing process because I can only edit them on my phone. Oh, hey, looks like Altoona is busy right now. We can go dash. Yeah, fuck this. We're gonna go dash. McDonald's, accept, yes. It's not very good for like vlogging like this though. It takes like a solid 10 seconds to start up, start filming and then stop filming. It takes too long to actually get clips. <laughs> what I'm thinking that I'll do is I will just attach the extension stick to my bike. That way I have like a little antenna sticking off my bike with the camera on it. So you guys will get like a top down view of the bike while I ride. There's a McDonald's right there. Why didn't they order from that one? It's much closer. They tipped me $3 for that. Dope. I'm gonna low key miss this, just being able to drive around delivering food. This is not something I can do in Europe, even if I use one of their apps, because I'm an American citizen and there's rules about where I'm allowed to work. Brick Street Cafe for 12 bucks, except, oh, 12 miles away. Whatever, we'll take it. 
DoorDash. DoorDash. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, they're like 12 miles away, but they're paying $12. So I think that's fine. God damn, the wind is fucking. fucking come on. Ugh. We're just going to stop right in the middle of the street. $12 for that order. Not too bad. Okay, now a situation like this is probably much better for a extendable camera like this because I'm not going very fast. Okay, maybe I'm going a little fast. Holy shit, okay, so I just found out something kind of crazy. So DoorDash, they give you uh, a prepaid debit card if you want to just immediately spend your DoorDash earnings. It's free, it's just a thing that they give you. But I just noticed that they give you lots of perks. If you use that card, you can get 19% off at Papa John's, 20% off at Burger King. If you use your little DoorDash card at Burger King using your Google Pay or the card itself, you get 20% off. This is great discounts for DoorDashers. You know, it's kind of funny. I would not know that anybody ever ate a Dairy Queen anymore if it wasn't for these DoorDash orders. Oh, wow. This is a retro looking Dairy Queen. Why am I wearing a fucking coat? They want a blizzard. Yeah, I've never seen a Dairy Queen that looks like this. Thank you. Yeah, we made four dollars and fifty cents. Five dollars seventy-five cents at Popeyes. Please don't blow away. I will be upset. Thank you for not blowing away. That was like five miles away. It's crazy that DoorDash is able to get away with paying their drivers $2. Yeah, I got $2 for that. Aside from the tip, he, he tipped me fairly well. He tipped me $3. But they were gonna pay me $2.75 to drive over five miles. It's crazy that DoorDash can get away with that. Like, I honestly don't understand how it works. DoorDash pays their drivers very little. DoorDash charges customers. DoorDash charges the store that you're ordering from. And somehow they're still not fucking profitable. I have no idea where their money is going. Like I get that building a cool app like this takes engineers and that costs money and whatnot, but once it's built, it's basically built. I don't understand why they consistently lose money. Oh, holy shit, that person just added another $5 tip. That's dope. So I found this thrift store while I was driving. We're gonna stop here and see if there's anything that we can use on our trip. I think I need a duffel bag. Let's see if we can find a duffel bag. I could get one from Walmart, but I know that as soon as I get my bike, I'm not gonna need the bag anymore. I've gotta fly with like a new tent and stuff. I'll show you that later, but. If I can get one for cheap, that's better. <laughs> I'm looking for something that I can bring on a plane. <laughs> Anybody want to thrift a wedding dress? That's actually a great idea. Oh, okay. Check out these bags. Um, that's more like a laptop bag. That should be, a, you can't really see because I'm not tall enough. Can I stand on this? I'm going to. This is probably perfect. I can put a tent in here, I can put a sleeping bag, I can put all of the stuff that I'm going to need in this, throw this on my carry-on, and then get rid of it once I actually get to Bulgaria. I don't see a tag on it though, so I'm not sure. One million dollars! One million dollars, deal. All right. 59 cents. This is cheaper than a dollar hamburger at McDonald's. God damn. Thrift shopping is just my favorite fucking thing. Let's go keep dashing. 59 cents. She told me it was a million dollars. I'm like, oh yeah, she's joking. I was expecting like five or six dollars. 59 cents. 
Oh, they're actually offering me $17.50 per hour. Yeah, let's give that a shot. And immediately we get a order for Subway. So oh, funny story, the subway that we are picking up our food from right now, uh, the first day of my life, uh, there was a girl and I knew what her favorite subway sandwich was. So I got the subway sandwich from this store right here, but then I kept it in a little ice box for probably five hours while I was preparing for the rest of the date. So by the time that we actually got there and started eating them, her sandwich was fucking soggy. Colton? Yes, Colton A, fantastic. Hopefully his sandwich isn't soggy. I wonder if I'll be delivering to any of my professors today. Yeah, I'm just gonna park in the middle of the street again. We made six dollars there. Got an order for Hardee's. Thank you so much. Great there. Thank you. Look at that. We have root beer restaurants too. I love working per time, actually. It's great. I don't go the speed. I got paid $4.55 as a base pay, and then he tipped another $4.50. We went almost $10 from that order. Okay, we finished dashing for the next like hour or so before our next schedule. I'm gonna try editing some of these 360 videos and see how they turn out. With my GoPros, what I do is I just pop the SD card out. Ah! God damn it. Okay, there we go. Typically what I do is I just pop the SD card out, pop it in my laptop, pull the footage over, and then edit all of the stuff on my laptop. But with this guy, I can't do that. I need to transfer it to my phone first, which means I've gotta connect it to my phone via Bluetooth, and that's just a bitch in itself. Connection successful, enter camera. So we can control this just the same as we would control like a Canon camera, you can see, you can see the footage on my phone. This is actually going to be useful when I'm on my bike. See, in my head, I'm gonna have this mounted to the bike in the very back, I'm gonna have it extended. I don't wanna have to stop my bike, go back, reach up, and then control this every time I wanna stop and start it. So the fact that I can control this entirely on my phone is pretty nifty. So for each one of the clips that I took, I need to manually go in and use my fingers to like select what things I wanna look at at each keyframe in the video. So it definitely takes a lot longer per clip just to edit it to something I can put in the video. So I want to rely on this uh, as little as possible just because every clip of this takes a lot more work to actually put together into a video. This is like dessert. Good in moderation, bad if you overdo it. I'm editing these videos right now and I'm realizing I'm not using this camera to its full potential. Then again, I'm not sure how good the microphone is, so it might not be that good, actually. I can definitely see it being useful for video, but the microphones are just trash. McDonald's, except. We gotta wait for them to make it. I am making $18 an hour to walk back and forth in this McDonald's. There we go. Yay, apartment complexes. But I'm getting paid per the hour, so I don't even mind hunting for it. I believe they are on the top floor. Hello, I have food for you. Thank you so much. Ha, I caught it. We made $8.54. Pretty solid, honestly. We've used a quarter of a tank of gas so far, and we've already made 55 bucks. So that means that a full tank of gas at this rate is worth about $200. Dairy Queen, except it's right next door. These people have got four blizzards. I hope they give me a cup holder. I wonder if Dairy Queen is just doing like excessive advertising on those apps because I swear, I don't know anybody that eats at Dairy Queen. $6.40. This is actually where I went to college. It's super nostalgic being back here. 
I don't remember our mascot being a fucking elephant. We didn't really have a mascot in a traditional sense, but I was pretty sure our mascot was a squirrel, colloquially. Hmm. Yeah, super nostalgic. Yeah, I guess elephants. Actually, I'm pretty sure I left my car unlocked and my window down. I should probably go return. We got an order from McDonald's, but my car is all the way over there. So I'm gonna accept it and we're gonna get paid to walk to my car. There we go. That was a very profitable walk. I just got a notification from them that says, hey, you don't seem to be heading in the correct way. If you need some help, let us know. <laughs> no, I'm heading there now. They would like it to be handed to them. Oh, stop. She's fine. Um, I gotta switch on. Okay, there you go. Have a nice day. She won't do. Fucking dogs. If you are going to explicitly request that somebody come to your door and hand you something, put your fucking dogs away. It was a small dog. I'm not worried about it. I'm more upset about like the, the, the general letting your dogs potentially attack someone. $6.68. Okay, I believe that we are done door dashing for the day because I have other things that I want to do. We are going to go head to a local campsite and test some camping equipment. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this campsite is called Otter Creek. Okay, fuck. I came here originally just to test out a tent I bought on Amazon, but I kind of want to spend the night, get a campfire going, do the whole fucking, do the whole fucking thing. Let me make sure I have a lighter, otherwise that whole thing is moot. It's funny, I have ever, I still have a soldering iron, so I could potentially get really creative about how I want to start a fire. <laughs> no, this campground right here, back in college, is where we would always go whenever we were going to get high with like, LSD or shrooms or whatever. This was like our nature that we would go walk around in. Because you can't sleep when you're on LSD, so we would just stay up all night just like fucking tripping balls out here in fucking nowhere. Now the wind is pretty bad right now, so I'm gonna make like a little, a little cave in the soot. That's where we're gonna put all of our kindling. A cheat code for dealing with fires that I found. Get a little USB powered fan. They just break everything. Watch this. Okay, we got a nice little campfire set up. Now let's go test this tent. The reason that I got a new tent is because all of the tents that I've had in the past are just the tents that I had to get. They don't really have access to Amazon in the same way that we do, especially in Bulgaria. The first tent that I got was terrible and it trapped in moisture. The second tent that I got was really big and it didn't fit on my bike very well. The second tent was too small and getting inside of it was just nasty. So I'm hoping that this tent here is small enough that it fits on the bike, but is large enough that I can sit up and actually like edit videos in it. Okay. It's got these little buckles. Okay, so I think that's the rain fly. I believe that the two poles go across diagonally. That means one end hooks into that corner and then this end hooks, come on, over here. And then the other one just hits the other two corners. Yeah, like that. I think I spent something to the tune of 70-ish dollars on this tent. And Amazon's return policy is so good. If this tent isn't absolutely perfect, I can just return it and get a new one. You can't do that. Shopping in Bulgaria. Maybe you can, I don't know, but it's really easy here. Look at this, the tent is tall enough that I can sit up in it. It's small, it'll fit on the bike well. I think this is absolutely perfect. I do believe that this is gonna be my house for the next couple months. 
Okay, so I see that it has a hook here so I can hang a light and I can light my entire tent. That's useful. It's got a pocket here for like phones and batteries. It's got this thing, which is an extra pocket. There we go, got an extra pocket. This thing is honestly fantastic. I just need to fucking pin it down. Wind, stop. Stay still. It's got a rain fly for when it rains. Let's see here. It's got all of the tent poles. Of course, I was also able to get another inflatable bed. Fucking Serbians aren't gonna be stealing this one. So we'll put that up there. I've got another pump coming that'll be able to blow it up really quickly. I've actually got a whole bunch more equipment that'll get here on Monday, so we'll do another test then. I've got my gloves. I have a bunch more equipment coming on Monday, so we'll have to test that out then. Today's goal was to test the 360 degree camera and the tent, and I think both of them passed with flying colors. I'm not actually gonna be sleeping in the tent tonight because my car is significantly more comfortable than this. This is just what you have to do when you're living on a bike. Using our little 59 cent duffel bag, we're gonna start preparing our carry out. Stop it, just stay still. I'm not sure how durable this tent is though. It feels really lightweight. I hope that doesn't become a problem in the future. And then once we get to Norway, we will just store this bag in like a airport locker, go explore the Arctic Circle. And then once we get back, we can take this, we can fly to Bulgaria because I don't need any of this for the Arctic Circle tour. There's a $5 camping ticket, so I actually don't want to sleep here. I'm going to go find a side street somewhere. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just realized there's another thing I forgot to show you guys. So you guys, if you've been watching for a couple months, you know that one of the biggest problems is that moisture builds up in my car. It'll stick to the windows. I got this little uh, dehumidifier thing for my car. What this is, this is basically just a bunch of silica beads. You can hear them. And when it's orange, that means that they can still absorb more. When it turns green, that means that it's time to recharge this. This has a little outlet right here that you plug into a wall and it just gets hot to cause all of that moisture to evaporate. You can see I just woke up and my windows don't have any moisture on them at all. So far, this thing has worked fantastic. I've noticed that it doesn't work when it's really cold outside because when it's really cold, these things will suck up water just like any cold substance will. But when it's like moderately warm outside, this thing is fantastic. 